Welcome back to Hockey Day in the Berg here on FATV. We are ready for our second contest and in many ways our most important contest as the Mustangs of Milton Academy get ready to take on the Griffins from the Pomfret School. This game as, long, as well as everything to, hear, to benefit Jake Tebow, but here is our national anthem. Hockey Day in the Berg here on FATV. John Gugarty joined as always by Dan Bolak as we get ready, Dan, to see a very important contest between the Mustangs of Milton and the Pomfret Griffins. It's definitely going to be a different look for us. It's, I think, the first time we've ever had a chance to do prep school hockey. I mean, not really much of a reason to. It's like the only prep school in Fitchburg, Applewild, is a uh, K through 9. But still, it's going to be very interesting to get to see these two teams. Not too many people know too many things about Milton Academy and Pomfret School. And of course, Milton Academy, Jake Tebow School. And that's why they're here in Fitchburg to play as part of this wonderful hockey day in the Berg for trifecta of hockey. Three games on the schedule here on FATV. This is game number two. We already saw Fitchburg State victorious over Westfield State by a final score of 6-3. to three. But as we get ready for Milton versus Pomfret, we want to make you let you know as well that you see the Tebow Tough, tbo14.fatv.org is the website to go to. That'll take you to a GoFundMe for Jake Tebow's medical expenses. Obviously a horrific injury suffered by him. This game, one of many benefits being held for him. And we are underway from the Wallace Civic Center with Dan Bolak on the play-by-play. -play. It's quickly dumped in by Milton. They're the home team, but in prep hockey, the home team wears color at home and the road team wears white. So Milton in the home, dark blue uniforms with orange numbering and trim going left to right in this first period. Pomfret in the road, white uniforms with red numbering and red and black trim. They will go from right to left. And it's 18 minute periods as well. As that one tipped towards goal, but up and into the right wing corner it goes. Milton comes in with a record 6-4 and 1 on the season. Pomfret 7 and 4. Two pretty closely matched teams as it's flipped in by Aiden Durso towards goal. Harrison Brown will glove that down and play it on for Milton. And that's going to be dumped down the ice. No icing it'll be as it goes into the right wing corner. Matt Young trying to dig that out, getting there first. Noah Webster for the Griffins. Both teams also coming off of victory. The Mustangs beat Lawrence Academy 5-2 on Wednesday. Other side of the coin, the Griffins of Pomfret defeated Worcester Academy 4-2 also on this past Wednesday. Two teams, teams, both teams that were vanquished, both from the Central Mass area, if you will, as that shot turned towards goal and it stopped by Brown. Harrison Brown, the 17-year-old from St. Louis, Missouri. This will be his sixth game of the season. Milton Academy has been alternating goaltenders with consistency. Jake Hardonick and Harrison Brown have been trading off game in, game out. Last time Brown played, though, he conceded four goals on 26 shots and only lasted two periods against Belmont Hill. So he's looking to bounce back in a performance here tonight. Leap Lamar with a shot through traffic, deflected on the way, got to Brown. He's able to stop it with his left pad. Cleared out of the zone, Pomfret back in their own end, will regather and regroup, dumped in, looking for Cam Geary, it's gonna go towards Brown, he has to stick that along to Kirk Heath. On the far side, pushed down the ice, and in pursuit for the Griffin C and Wollenit. 
Tries to play that on the left side, Brendan Marr. In the left circle. Stick battling on the boards. Around for Connor Lee. Into that left corner again. Or it's Marr. Left point. Just barely kept it. Shot on. Redirected right out in front. Trying to put that past Kellen Bowden, the Pomfret goaltender. But it goes just a bit wide of the cage. And now dumped up and out of play. 15.44 to go in the first. Bowden, a 19-year-old from Colchester, Connecticut, left the puck wide open in front of net. Luckily for him and his Griffins, there was no Mustang able to take advantage of it. We'll get a face-off to Bowden's right with 15.44 to play here in the first. Bowden, one of three captains for Pomford, along with Philippe Lamar and Niels Versilius. Bowden playing in his 10th game. He's 6-3 with two clean sheets, a 208 goals against a 934 save percentage. Or we have a whistle here and a penalty coming. Interference is the call, and our first power play is on its way. Saw Tate Fitzmaurice of the Griffins get involved with a Mustang, but I think it will be a man from Milton being sent to the box. That's Jackson Faunen, the 17-year-old from Binghamton, New York. So he'll serve two minutes or less. It's more or less NCAA rules. Just a few changes, one of them, of course, being 18-minute periods instead of 20. That's Gutard's goal! And Potter gets the first strike in this contest! Declan Chapman, and just three seconds into the power play, puts the Griffins on the board. You know, coming into this game, Dan, I was a little concerned or a little curious to see what the mindset of the Griffins would be. Obviously, you know, they're not blind. They know what's going on here. They know that this is a very partisan crowd here rooting for Milton, rooting for Jake Tebow's team. It's a difficult position for them to be in, but they have come out flying. They have put the puck in the net. They take the early 1-0 lead. Just two minutes and 30 seconds into this contest, they pay in immediately on the power play. Now Milton on the back skate. Struggling with it there was Mason Shen being pressured there by the Griffins. Moving around to the near side corner. Film trying to position themselves. Moving along there from Chris Amodio. The left point, Henry Cohen. Excuse me as I get the roster crossed. That was Noah Webster sending it across. Shot went wide. Turn around towards goal by Matt Spears. Not much going there. A second shot blocked from the right side boards as well. Bonford still able to keep it in the zone. And on the left side in the circle, Declan Chapman looking for another. Can't keep control of the puck. Persilius able to knock that one away. Now it's settled in by Mika Kalenchian. Floated up in the air to Jacob Cole of Milton in the left wing corner. Big hit behind the play, bad angle shot. Bowden battles down the pad. Well, let that one sneak in as it goes into the near side corner. Goal was unassisted for Declan Chapman. Getting the first strike in this contest for the Pomford Griffins. Just turned in there and you can see the bench appealing for a penalty from Pomfret because they thought maybe there was a breakaway that was broken up by an infraction, but not so say the referees. I mean, if a player takes his stick and whacks at the leg of his opponent and then the opponent falls to the ice, that constitutes tripping, does it not? But a play on from the referees. Quick turning shot there by Matt Muirhead. And that one stopped by Brown. 13.36 to go, first period. It's the Griffins of Pomfret getting the first strike in the one nothing lead. And Pomfret Dan really has controlled the momentum. You can see the shots on goal, 5-1 in favor of the Griffins. And that reflects reality. They have dominated these first few minutes of action. Draw will come to the right of Harrison Brown. The keeper out of St. Lewis. It's Milton pushing it up the ice and dumped it around the boards by Dylan Hunt. Will be settled behind by Webster. Over to the far side. Pass intercepted by Lee. He'll swing it around to the far, from the far to the near. And Pomfret digging it out on the boards. Right out in front of us and getting it out of the zone. Baden Powers picking it up. 
Left side shot gets blocked in front. Brennan Marr with the release. And the net finds its way off its moorings and will get a stoppage with 12.58 to go in the first. While we have a second, we'll thank one more time our underwriters who make this and every remote broadcast possible. FATV's remote productions are underwritten by Rollstone Bank and Trust, Workers Credit Union, Unitil, Minuteman Press, The Sentinel and Enterprise, Fitchburg State University, and UMass Memorial Health, Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital. Thank you so much to them for all of their support. Cross that around the boards, far side, Webster. Pulling that in for Pomfret for Josh Milso. Out to the near side, and just taking it to the boards. Three, four players looking to dig that one out. Eventually, Mustang's able to knock it free from Amodio. Still looking to control it there on the half boards. Now to the point, Amodio standing there. Now on the right side, Bleach in. Takes a shot off the iron. Found its way past Bowden, but not into the net. Didn't get the bounce off the iron that they wanted and a penalty against Pomfret. As the Mustang sent into the boards in an aggressive manner, cross-checking is the call. Josh Milso looked at the re looked at the referee like, what did I do? But uh, no, he, he knew what he did. He'll go to hockey jail for a couple minutes. 19-year-old from Bridgewater, eight points on the season, will sit for two minutes or less. We saw Pomfret score just about immediately on their power play. Now we'll see what Milton Academy has to offer. The draw control by the Griffins and Lamar trying to throw it around the boards, not out. Kept in at the right point by Kalichian. Thrown around to the far side for Ethan Davidson, now thrown out in front, not much going there. Kalichian, right wing corner, Henry Cohen. We'll go around far side for Davidson. Move it on the pass, and then that's knocked down by Pomfret, cleared out of danger. And out of the corner, Brown will play it. Mustangs will look to reset. 40 seconds gone on this power play. Pass up ice. This building trying to reset here. And a rocketing shot there by the alternate captain, Nathan Davidson. A bit too high, it goes. Bleachian trying to feed for a one-timer for a redirection. Juan Jacob Pohl ultimately puck popping up in the air into the right wing corner. Bleachian again, out to the left point, holding. Now the pass over into the circle. Back to the left point in Mason Chen. Chen with the shot, saved by Kellen Bowden. It's a fantastic save by Bowden going full extension, reaching out to the left side, just snatching that puck out of midair. Bowden not tested so much thus far, but the 19-year-old from Colchester, Connecticut, flashing the leather, making a very nice looking save. Faceoff will come to his right with 49 seconds to go on the man advantage. Draw one by Milton. Shot from the point by Kurt Heath, ends up turning into a pass off the boards. Bowden tries to cover it, can't get a hold on it. Brad Holcomb, captain of this Mustang side, We'll pass it along into the right circle. Look for a tip in front. He's trying to get Holcomb to tip the shot from Matt Young. Didn't get a lot of wood on it. In the left circle, 25 to go on the power. And it comes out for looking for that one-timer in the left circle. Pass broken up by Pomfret and cleared down the length of the ice. Maybe time for Milton, Milton to make one more push as we approach 10 seconds left on this power play. Big stretch pass, too strong of a stretch pass. Hybrid icing in effect with the NCAA rule book, and Noah Webster is first of the dots. Now more or less kill off the rest of this penalty. Only five seconds remaining on the punishment. It's Josh Milso. Draw will come to the left of Harrison Brown. Brown coming in with a 4 and one record. 279 goals against 898 save percentage. Really, that game against Belmont Hill last time out was really his first misstep of the season. Jason Cardonic has not had the run support in the games that he's played, only a 2-3-1 record, but he has the better numbers. 202 goals against 932 save percentage. Also from Major City, he's from Chicago. Bonfort trying to get it into the zone from Tate Fitzmaurice. That's the puck on the far side boards. 
Picked up and corralled by Mason Chen. The far side touch pass is broken up and thrown back in the zone. Jesse Heinberg battling for it for Pomfret. It does come out of the zone, turning around, trying to bring it back in is Aiden Durso. On the left side, Puck squirts back to the neutral zone. Lamar on the far side, rainbowed into the zone, into the left wing corner. Picked up by Durso, looking to feed it out in front. But Puck just floats out there and picked up by the Mustangs. Dumped Always an interesting uh, little bit of spectator play when that puck gets up close to the ceiling. Feels like a, a very low ceiling comparative to most rinks here at the Wallace Civic Center, but that one just barely didn't touch it. It only feels lower because of how high we're up off the ice with the press box and all that. From the rinks I've been to, it's not that low. Get about 25 feet of uh, horizontal clearance, I do believe. I've, I've seen worse. Just past halfway in this first period. Again, three 18-minute periods in prep school hockey. Nate Watson for Pomfret. Beating Persilius. Oh, the left point, Ian Wollinen. Dumped around. Far side, Kurt Heath trying to get their big collision. A Mustang and a Griffin go flying. As here's Pole with a shot rising over the crossbar. You want football's kick to go over the crossbar. You don't want pucks going over the crossbar. There's a kick save by Bowden off the stick of Mika Kalichian. A little bit more aggression from Milton in these past few minutes after Pomfret controlled the place of play in the early going. Trying to close it on the shot board. 5-3 in favor of the Griffins. Brought into the left wing corner for Kalichian. Trying to move it along to the near side. Short, quick passes there in the corner. Bad angle shot, fought off by Bowden. Right point shot off a skate, settled. Pole trying to shoot again, but redirected into the corner. Too many bodies in the way. Webster lets that go for Milso. Milton taking it out left side, trying to find a little bit of space to work with. Pomfret giving them nothing, as you would expect. Dumped down, not going to be icing. Puck's not going to make its way to the goal line before the Mustangs can retrieve it. That one on goal from quite a long distance. And Kelton Bowden a bit surprised by that. Able to make the stop, and he's not going to take any chances. Well, he was able to make the stop the second time. The first time, Danny put his pad down, made the save, and then lifted it up, and the puck started trickling backward was a moment where you thought maybe that's just going to sneak over the line. But Bowden was able to cover up and he'll draw a face off to his left side. 11 minutes gone in this game and a great release off the draw there from Davidson. Didn't make its way all the way to Bowden. Is on the other side, offsides against Pomfret. Tate Fritzmore is trying to lead the rush in there, but someone jumped the line. I think it was Matt Muirhead, his fellow forward, the 18-year-old from Avon, Connecticut was just a little bit over the line. The players in this contest ranging in ages from 15 to 19 years old. I figured that when I was putting the stat sheet together, there's really no point in trying to classify them by junior, senior, whatever. No. Get some players have post-grad years. It's like some years of graduation are just different than others with reclassifications and the like. So it's just easiest to say, here's how old they are. Makes sense. And many of these players we may very well be seeing playing hockey at the next level up in the NCAA. So these could be some names to keep your eye on in the local trade in a couple of years' time. Maybe players coming in playing Fitchburg State or playing at other Division Three rinks, some Division Ones as well. I know one player on Milton already committed to a Division One team. We'll talk a little more about that as we go on. Kurt Heath for the Mustangs. Trying to move it along for Madden Powers. Skate up the near side, Brennan Marr. Fights off the check, sending Ben Bundy into the boards. Five on five violence there. Sent Ben Bundy down onto his backside is what he did. Declan Chapman, he's got the goal in this game. Storming right towards the goal, never could get the shot off. As Heath was playing solid defense there for the Mustangs to prevent him from getting an opportunity. 
On the left side, boards kept it at the point. Lamar along for Matt Spears. Left wing corner whiffed on the clearing attempt. Second chance at least gets it to a player who can carry it out. And here is Powers up to the point. Nice backhand pass shot turned aside by Bowden. Rebound goes into the far side corner. Or Marr trying to dig it out for Milton. Four players ultimately, one from Pomfret, able to win the puck as Nate Watson from New Brunswick. Trying to play on with it. That pass taken down at the red line by Woolenin. Into the right wing corner. Back in the Milton zone for Silius. Nudging it along, taken by Mason Chen for the Mustangs. Redirection out there on the shot, but it's turned wide of the cage. Great effort though by Pomfret, looking for their second with 4.30 to go in the first period. one nothing. the Griffins in front on a Declan Chapman goal. Milton pushing their way up ice. That's not going to be icing. Bowden had the hand up, but that pass clearly coming from beyond the red line. Milton moving it along, Amodio. Behind the net for Kalachian. Will look, get the shot, and it's fought off there by Bowden, a stand-up save. Right wing corner, Kalachian up for pole, fighting off of a Griffin. Amodio with the shot, knocked down by the stick of your head. Find the net again for Milton. Again, really controlling pace of play right now. Just looking for a goal. Gets a shot off, but that's another blocked shot there. That was Milso getting in the way for the Griffin. Another shot from the circle. That's going to flutter off a stick in the direction of Kellen Bowden, and he'll batten down the hatches. Very patient offensive attack in those last few minutes by the Mustangs, Dan. They weren't just throwing the puck at the net. They were trying to find the open man, trying to set up the play. Very patient, disciplined hockey. They know there's plenty of time left. They are trailing, but there's plenty of time. They just need to play their game, and they're confident that they'll get back into this one. These two schools, members of the NEPSAC, which has nearly 200 prep schools in the state of Massachusetts. There's a shot and a kick save by Bowden. Finally, Milton takes the shot lead on that. Trying to transition on the stretch pass, two on two. A lot of nifty stick work there by Matt Spears, not able to get the opening as his defender stays right with him. Milton trying to push it up ice from the near side. Brad Holcomb dispossessed. Pomfret moving it out to the neutral zone. Trying to backhand flick it in was Matt Spears, but the amount of time that he was uh, held up from really gaining the zone, enough time for a Griffin to jump in there first and force the offside. 2.47 to go first period, 1-0 Pomfret in front. Want to thank our fantastic crew making this broadcast possible here on FATV. Nate Glennie, the executive director, is our director. We'll tell you the rest of the folks in a moment. It's off the draw, Milton trying to fight it up ice. That's going to be offsides now against the Mustangs. Jared Roberts, Travis Falk in the truck doing everything that needs doing. Our fantastic camera crew, Robin Como, Todd Govin, and Caitlin Mobilia. Great work from all of them. Also, great meal provided by Nate before the game. That was, uh, that was very nice. Got to keep the, uh, the crews fed for these truck events after all. Of course, worthy of a triple header is the shot gloved there by Brown. I believe, Dan, and quote me, correct me if I'm wrong, that was French cuisine, was it not, that we had from uh, Le Quatre Vins Dix Neuf, perhaps? Ah. Ah, yes. Very fine French cuisine served to the crew here at FATV. Nothing but the best. And those who know their French numbers will get that joke. Exactly. Shot cut down front, second chance blocked in front as well. Milne trying to push up on a potential three on two. It's Kalichian bodied into the boards by Milso. And wrapped around the boards to the near side. Trying to get that on the run is Fresilius. Bodied off there by Bonin. 
For the second time today, the Forsilius thought he was brought down by a little bit more than a body. You can see he was not terribly happy as he was getting up off the ice. Refs have been led into play. Only one penalty called on either side. And the lone goal, power play goal as well. Declan Chapman getting his fifth of the season. Bill will skate it out. Here is Pohl. Pohl getting a shot right towards goal. Storming in on Bowden. And the puck is under him somewhere. But the more important thing is it's not behind him. Puck is under the goaltender and in the blue area, so no goal there. We saw that in our first game today. Goaltender for Westfield just kind of accidentally knocking the puck into the back of the net for the first Fitchburg goal. It's a very difficult play if you're a goaltender. You, you think you've got the puck, but then there's four bodies crashing down on top of you, and at that point, you hope you have the puck. Draw one by Milton and a quick shot on goal by Davidson goes behind the net. As Davidson trying to get a pass off, that's knocked down the ice by Pomfret on the red line, but hand pass is what is indicated. Yeah, I was not surprised that they called a hand pass as soon as it turned out that Pomfret had that one. Pass was uh, less knocked down and more intentionally swatted in a certain direction, which you cannot do. You can do it with the stick as long as you keep it below your shoulders when you're trying to make a pass like that, but you can't do it with the hand. Wasn't sure if he got stick or hand on that, but ultimately they ruled it was hand, and so the draw comes to the right of Kellen Bowden. He's made seven saves for Bomfret. One of three captains again on this Griffin side. It's Davidson on the left side. Shed with the shot is blocked. Seen a lot of blocked shots, and we're going to get a penalty here as Brad Holcomb touches the puck in frustration. His side's going on the kill with 54 seconds to go in the first. And I think Holcomb's frustration is rooted in the fact that it's Holcomb going to the sin bin. He was, uh, he knew he was guilty of something and he was not, not uh, entirely happy that the officials caught him on it. Bomfort one for one on the power play. On their man advantage, it took less than five seconds to find the back of the net. Can they continue with such sparkling efficiency? Not if Milton wins the draw, at least. Mustangs tried to clear it, but instead found the bench. Now, these are two teams that I imagine these players have played very little hockey in this particular facility. After all, we don't really have any prep schools in the city of Fitchburg that would play ice hockey. Takes a little bit of time, I imagine, just to, you know, I, at a certain level, ice is ice, but also at a certain level, every sheet of ice is a new sheet. So if it's your first time here, you got to learn how the ice feels, how the puck bounces off the boards, that sort of thing. Been a very well-played first period, though. Been very impressed with the play from both of these sides. Two teams playing very well, equally matched, it so seems, and the record's coming in indicative of that. 6-4 and 1 for Milton Academy, 7-4 and four for Pomfret. Settled down for Silius with the self pass, getting around pole. Now the slot on the right side, shot stopped by Brown. As we saw in the first game, sharp passing leading to one timers is what you want to see out of your offense. Many of the goals that Fitchburg State got in game one of our triple header came from me methodology. Just being able to settle those quick, sharp passes and immediately fire it past. As it's dumped down, Bowden will just backhand it out to play keep away, and they'll run out the clock as we end our first period of play here from the Wallace Civic Center. The score, Build Academy nil and Pomfret School one. Really good by Milton in the second half of that first period, Dan, to get back into this game, build a little momentum. The shots on goal tally was leaning very heavily in favor of Pomfret about halfway through the period, but then Milton was able to tie it up, really get back into this game. 
on the other side for Pomfret, you know, I mentioned after they scored, it's a, it's a very uncomfortable position for them to be in. They know they can look over there and see the signs. They know what this game is all about. But at the same time, you can't have a benefit game without an opponent. And this is still a regular season game. There are still points on the board here. You know, for the home fans, it would be lovely if Milton, Milton Academy came back, you know, got a 2-1 victory and everybody was happy and they all got to go home and cheer. Oh, what a great day it was on Jake Tebow Day. But for Pomfret, all they get out of that is a loss. So they're in the very, they're in the awkward position of having to come here. And obviously it's the same for any road team, but more so in this game. You know, nobody wants them to win this game except for them. And they have to use that as motivation as they get into the locker rooms and as they try to expand on this one nothing lead. It's a pretty solid crowd, not just the crowd making their way, you know, supporting Milton Academy, but Pomfret located in the northeast of Connecticut. Fairly solid fan base making their way up here for what is a neutral site game, but it is a home game for Milton. It's been a very interesting first 18 minutes. Been a very good, very well played first 18 minutes. And of course, we just touched on it. You'll see the signs. You'll see folks in the stands with them. Plenty of folks up in the uh, lobby area with those signs as well. It is all about Jake Tebow. It is all about TBO14, Tebow Tough, TBO14.fatv.org. That'll take you to the GoFundMe page. Obviously, again, this is the second of three games we have on tap for you today here on FATV. Later tonight, you will see the Blue Knights of Lunenburg Air Shirley take on the Red Raiders of Fitchburg Monty Tech. But for this moment, we will take the first intermission break along with the players and be back with the action for you in just about 11 and a half minutes. It's Hockey Day in the Berg right here on FATV. Hockey Day in the Berg continues here on FATV. It is the Pumphrey School leading Milton Academy 1-0 as we get ready for the second period of action from the Wallace Civic Center. Folks, we are going to let you know one more time and plenty more times as we go on that all of the benefits from this game, all of the proceeds and all of your donations as well, if you go to tbo14.fatv.org, will go to the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. This, get, this game and indeed this day is all about Tebow Tough, all about benefiting Jake Tebow, the player for Milton Academy, who of course suffered a horrific spinal injury while playing a game this past summer. All of the benefits and all of the proceeds from today go to that Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. It has been an incredible day so far. And believe it or not, folks, we are not even halfway done with the hockey here on FATV. We already saw Fitchburg State University defeat Westfield. Later on, we will see Fitchburg Monty Tech take on Lunenburg Air Shirley. But right now, Dan, we have two more periods of hockey in what is proving to be a very intriguing prep school matchup. Very evenly matched in the first period. Both goaltenders with seven saves, but that one shot the difference. That coming off the stick of Declan Chapman, the 18-year-old from Douglas. South Worcester County getting his fifth goal of the season for the Griffins just two and a half minutes into this contest. And only five seconds into the first power play for Pomfret as well. Didn't take much time for the Griffins to strike. And it's worth noting that Pomfret will have a power play for another 67 seconds to start the second period. Brad Holcomb of the Mustangs remaining in the penalty box for another 67 seconds or less. If you're a Pomfret partisan, you would definitely vote for less if given the option. Pomfret in the white jerseys trimmed with red and dark blue shorts. Milton on the other side in the dark blue trimmed in red and white. As we mentioned, in prep school hockey, the home team wears the color jerseys. Whereas in college hockey and in high school hockey, it's the home side who wears the light uniforms and the road side who wears the darks. It's been a very attractive day so far, Dan. Fitchburg and Westfield have very nice uniforms, and I got to say, I like the look of these Griffins and Mustangs as well. You have nothing but great jerseys today. It's almost like if you made two hockey teams out of the Chicago Bears, you know? With the armbands, with the, with the dark blue and the red and white. Reminiscent of that. It's a very nice looking game. You got the call for the second. 
We are underway here for the second period of action. Poffert going left to right as the teams have changed ends. Mustangs clear the zone. Griffins will have to wait and send it back in. Grabbed there by Jackson Faunen. Tries to clear, held in by the Griffins. Shot goes past the wide net. Sent back behind there. On the end will be kept in by Forcilia, so it'll go all the way down. And it will be played there by Kellen Bowden. The penalty clock actually never started. It's still, now it's going to start, but it's going to be off for a little bit. I imagine he'll be told to come out of the box, well, in time, unless something happens here. Opportunity there for the Griffiths, nothing going. Declan Chapman unable to find his second goal of the game. Cleared out once again by the Mustangs. You know, when the clock gets 15.53, that... That's when he or, should be coming out yeah, of the 16 box. 16.53, that's what it should be. So it should be just about 10 seconds left for Brad Holcomb. We'll see how accurate they play it. Matt Spears gathers in the Griffin end, sends it back behind his net. Poffert will set. Holcomb is out of the box. So they kept it on the ice. Opportunity now for the Griffins. Spears again, comes back out, sends it forward. Skating through the middle is Forcilius. Leaves it off for Webster. Webster's shot is blocked. Milton with an opportunity to clear, and they will. This is Jacob Pohl sends it in. Two on one for the Gri Mustangs, rather, if they hurry. Can't capitalize. Now gathered on the far side board. Centering pass goes deflected off of a Griffin, and it'll be covered up there by Kellen Bowden. 16-20 to play here, period number two. Poffert still leads 1-0. And only a single shot in that period, and it's, it was Milton getting that right there. So Popper just not able to do anything with the rest of that power play time they had carrying over. Better job on the second opportunity for the Mustang penalty kill. Now skating in front of net, finally shoots, goes wide. Pursued along the near side boards, this is Kalichian. Kalichian knocked into the boards, still has the puck. Wanted to go behind the net, instead he'll send it back for Jacob Pohl. Pole takes a shot, save made by Bowden. He kicked a little bit further than he had to. That went off the inside of his knee, but he still made the save. Now Kalichian behind the net for Pole. Can't keep it in the zone. Can Kurt Heath, he'll have to skate all the way down to his own end, and it'll be a chance for Pomfret to change. Long pass here, shot blocked. That off the stick of Connor Lee. Lee sends it back behind the net, pursued there by Wallen and Pomfret. Comes out in front of the net and it is covered up by Bowden. We'll get another face off. The shots of this game started 5 1 in favor of Pomfret, but since then, the shots have been 8 to 3 in favor of the Mustangs. Still buzzing looking for that equalizing goal. It's almost like that uh, power play goal woke the Mustangs up, made them realize, oh, hey, we're playing hockey here. We're also now just a little over a minute past halfway in regulation time of our hockey trifecta of coverage here at Hockey Day in the Berg. Each game gets a little bit shorter as we go. We had 20 minute periods for Fitchburg State, 18 here as the shot is saved by Bowden. That came off the stick of Jackson Faunen. Of course, 18 minute periods here and then 15 minutes for a nice breezy third game as Fitchburg Bonnie Tech takes on the Griffin Vikings of Lunenburg Air Shirley. What? What? Griffin Vikings were last week. They were last week. Well, dang it. Yeah. I had to make one embarrassing mistake at some point, didn't I? <laughs> It'll be the Blue Knights. It'll be the Blue Knights. All right, fine. Shot by Milton goes behind the net. Sent back the other way by Hunt. Going back and forward between the net. This is Cohen. Tried to leave it off for Fawn and went through his legs. Hunt will chase down back in the Mustang end. Good aggressive forecheck there by the Griffins. De Declan Chapman had a chance for a possession, but it came out across the blue line. He'll have to tag up, and the Mustangs will pick it up there. Long pass deflected right at the red line. Goes in, no icing. No, there is icing. Just a bit of a late whistle there. They must have decided that the stick must have been just on the wrong side of the red line which uh, Brad Holcomb was the one placing his stick. He can't believe that that was the case. But the faceoff will come all the way down. 
Dylan Hunt wearing number 15 matches his age, 15 years old. He's, I think, the youngest player that we're seeing out there. And he's from lands familiar to you. Panthers eat hawk meat. Marlboro, Massachusetts man, Dylan Hunt. Big guy, 6'1", 175. And so because of the icing, no line changes allowed. So they had to switch the personnel back on to whoever was on the ice before they blew the whistle. Face off won by the Mustangs, but lost along the near side boards in the neutral zone. Now Pomfret takes it in. Fitzmaurice chases behind the net. Sends it all the way to the other side. Ben Bundy sends it back. Fitzmaurice will turn around and give chase the other way. Milton trying to clear here. Kept in momentarily by Muirhead, but not long enough. Coming up the other way is Davidson. Davidson shot save made by Bowden. Now from the right point, sent in back behind the net. Goes off the back of the net. Cross ice pass goes across to Chris Amodio. Amodio will send it in back behind the net once again. Mason Chen will give chase for the Mustangs. Can't control it in front of goal. Just barely gaining the red line. It's not actually gaining the red line and sending it all the way down. We'll get an icing and another face off back in the Griffin end. Wonder if the Griffins feel just as aggrieved as Milton did a minute or so ago on that icing. I think they might have a better case on this one. I really did think they had gained the red line before they dumped it in. But the Zebras disagree, and they're the ones that matter. And Bomford really having trouble uh, getting any pressure on Harrison Brown. Still on eight shots. Shot one by Pomfret, taken back behind the net by Lamar. He'll clear all the way down, and we'll blow the whistle again. 13-15 to play here, period number two. Pomfret is continuing to ice the puck. The officials just have to take a little extra work with the, the couple hundred foot skates. It's also interesting, the number of referees on the ice, the number of officials will drop as the game goes, as the day goes on. We went from four in the first game to three in this one, and we'll have two in the last one. But, you know, different different rule sets, different levels of hockey, different rules, different number of officials. And now offsides. Offsides is a pretty consistent rule. Pretty consistent, not universally consistent, but close enough for our purposes. It was Henry Cohen who was just barely over the line when he shouldn't have been there. We will get a face off out in neutral ice just on the Pomfret side of the red line. Cohen will head to the bench and get a breather. Might have been something else, actually. May not have actually been offsides. It was a penalty. No, indeed. We're going to get it was too many men. Or. That's what it was. As I just realized that the referee was actually putting up six fingers. And that's, the le and that's too many men. So a power play for the Mustangs as they look to even this one up. Lawrence Viola going to the penalty box to serve it. Too many Griffins on the ice. Now Pomfret is able to clear the zone. Milton will have to reset. I've always mentioned as one of my little pet peeves is the fact that there is no consistent signal for too many men. Some put six fingers up, some will spin their finger around. But, but you know when Jim LaPointe puts a penalty on the board and there's no number associated with it, then you know it was a bench minor, in this case too many men. Loose puck in front of the net, poked loose by the Griffins. Finally, no, actually not even cleared out of the zone yet. Finally, Lamar is able to send it all the way down. 75 seconds to play on the man advantage for Milton. Very aggressive forecheck. They're actually turned over by the goaltender. Shot saved, made. Rebound is covered up. Matt Spears had a golden opportunity. Ball in his lap. Harrison Brown a little bit loosey-goosey with the puck there. Fortunately for him and his Mustangs, he was able to recover and make the save after he turned it over to Spears. He shook off the pressure from that one Griffin, but his breakout pass just went right to Spears. And the 18-year-old from Barrington, Rhode Island, picked that one up and got himself a gold opportunity. Brown made his bed, but fortunately he doesn't have to lie, and it made the save there, his first save of the period. Heath sends it forward to Faunin. Faunin advances for Young, gains the blue line. Skates it in. Matt Young will take it back behind the net. He'll look to get it back out. Heath keeps it in at the blue line. Skates forward. Looking to shoot. His shot goes wide. 
over the top of the net. Might have gotten deflected by a Griffin en route. Centering pass there, covered up. Squirts loose and goes back to the back left corner. This is Heath once again. Heath's left-handed shot goes wide. Fawn in there to chase. Fawn in sends it back out for Heath. Heath looking to shoot again. Well defended there. Sends it forward instead. That shot goes wide. Good save by Bowden. And finally, the Griffins clear. Ten seconds left on the power play. They've basically killed this one off. But Milton with one more chance. Drops it back off. That shot saved, made by Bowden. Now we are back to even strength. As Milton continues to have the puck in the offensive end. Back here for Hunt. His turnaround shot goes wide. Pursued by Holcomb. Grabbed, however, by a Pomfret Griffin. Sent through the legs of Hunt. Chen will give chase. No icing as the puck's momentum died right before it hit the red line. Chen gains the blue, then the red, sends it forward to Amodio. Gets it into the offensive zone. Cleared right back out by Pomfret. Milton will reset. Quick aggressive hockey from the, from the Mustangs here. This is Chen, centering pass, deflected. Couldn't get the shot off. Had a really good opportunity there. Couldn't load up in time. I think it was Gus Dudley who had a chance to put that in. Actually, excuse me, I believe it was Brendan Marr. But either way, just couldn't get the shot off that he wanted. It's covered up by Bolton. We'll get a face off to his right side with 10-16 to play here in the second period. Milton has definitely found themselves with more of the momentum in this period and have done a much better job in controlling the pace of play. Pomfret dumps it in behind the net, grabbed there by Milton. Pole will clear, sends it forward for Kalichian. Kalichian gains the offensive zone. Looks to beat his defender, can't do it. Tried to bounce it off the backboards, but he instead bounced it off the netting, which he can't do. They stop the play if you do that. Yep. Ends up going you know, behind the boards and becomes a souvenir for one of the Pittsburgh Monty Tech players standing by. Also, I think now these prep teams are learning the penalty box doors don't close by themselves. We didn't have that problem in the first game because Fitchburg State does put penalty box attendants in the boxes. <laughs> we'll get another face off to the right side of Kellen Bowden. Officials taking a moment to enjoy some American woman. Finally dropped the puck. Pomfret gains the zone, sent back behind the net. Pursued there by Spears. Spears sends it out to his defenseman. Tried to find Spears again. Couldn't hit him maybe one more time. It goes back behind the Milton net. Grabbed there by Dylan Hunt. He just literally hand passes it behind him. But fortunately for him, no whistle as it's grabbed by Pomfret. Turned over immediately to Milton. Brad Holcomb gains the zone. He's got Davidson with him if he wants him. Instead, Holcomb sends it back. Back to Spears, who barely keeps it in at the blue line and then immediately loses the handle. Odd man rush for Pomfret if they hurry. Two on one opportunity. Shot goes wide. Nothing there. That off the stick of Matt Spears. Now grabbed by Declan Chapman. His shot goes wide. Milton will reset. Hunt gains the red line and then immediately dumps it in. Milton changing all five. Pomfret with an opportunity to reset, turn it over at center ice. Mason Chen grabbed it, tried to send it back in. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Connor Lee grabs it, three on one for Milton. If he hurries, centering pass just a little bit too long for Marr. He was right there, but he couldn't find the hookup. Lee's going to be regretting that. Now an opportunity for Pomfret. This is Cam Geary. His centering pass goes to nobody in particular and it is steered back behind the net. Another centering pass goes to no one. Grabbed there by Matt Powers. Powers sends it forward for Romain. Romain's got the zone. His shot saved, made by Bowden. It was actually Connor Lee took the shot. I apologize there, but it was a very impressive save by Kellen Bowden. Again, the 19-year-old from Colchester, now with 13 saves in the contest. Haven't seen Romain out there today. But he's the player I was alluding to earlier. He's committed to playing for Providence College. Expected to start playing for the Friars in the 23-24 season. Comfort wins the draw. Quickly get it into the Milton zone. Pursued in the offensive end by Fitzmaurice. Fitzmaurice loses the handle. Cleared out. Matt Young sends, sends it across the ice. Couldn't quite find Heath. Now Pomfret with an opportunity. 
Chris shot from the right side, wide open in front of the net. That shot from that distance, it's pretty easy pickings for Harrison Brown. He snatches it out of the air and will get a whistle. Just the second shot of the period for the Griffins of Pomfret School. You know, that first one coming on a turnover by Brown. This time, you know, a proper chance manufactured by the Griffins themselves. And a solid shot on goal, but Brown's got the glove to match. Faceoff comes to Brown's right, won by the Griffins. Loose puck right at the faceoff dot, finally grabbed by Milton. Chance for them now, Davidson gains the blue line. Looks to pass, his centering pass is deflected wide. Grabbed on the other side, the shot is blocked. And it's cleared out by Pomfret. Reset does Milton. Kurt Heath takes it in. Leaves it off for Holcomb. Holcomb sends it forward back to Heath. Heath looking for Davidson. Davidson centering path to Holcomb. His shot got barely blocked. If he had gotten the full velocity there, it probably would have gotten in. But great defensive work just to slow that down. Now another shot is deflected, and it goes into the netting. We'll stop the clock at 7.07 to play. Shots 7-2 to two in this period in favor of Milton. They've been buzzing. They've gotten some good chances. Really been impressed by Kellen Bowden in goal. Bowden has done fantastic work, particularly in this second period. 14 shots, 14 saves for him. Face off on the near side. Scrambled for, finally controlled by Pomfret. Chapman gains the blue line. No, he does not. He was just a little bit offside. Got Chapman there, Aiden Durso in as well. I think maybe Durso was a little bit ahead of the play. The officials blow the whistle. We'll take it back out to neutral ice. Face off. Uh, you think I could hit him with my pen from here? That's about how close we are to the press box here at the Civic Center. Sent into the Milton end. Pursued there by Chen. Chen clears it out, deflected by a Pomfret Griffin, all the way down to Bowden, and he'll cover up and get an offensive zone faceoff for the Mustangs. It's actually the second time in this game that Milton has tried to dump it in from deep in their own zone and actually put it on target. One of the easier saves Kellen Bowden's ever made, but hey, they all count the same in the scorecard, right? Yeah, the tremendous acrobatic save and the 150-footer. You get a save nonetheless, and it all works out. Griffin's changing a couple of personnel. Now they're ready. Faceoff comes to Bowden's right. It's won by Pomfret. Opportunity for them, sent forward for Geary. Geary's shot goes wide. He'll try to recover and take it again behind the net. For Silius, back to Geary, loses the handle, and it'll be cleared out by Jacob Pohl. Pohl sends it forward for Powers. Powers looking to shoot, his shot goes wide, may have been trying to pass there. Kulichian pursues, tried to find Pohl, but instead it was grabbed by Pomfret. Almost sent down the ice, but instead it's sent into the scorekeeper's table. And we will reset and have, a, have ourselves a face-off. I feel like the Milton bench has had to do a little more ducking. Paul Kanata, head coach of Milton Academy, 16th year at the helm for the Mustangs. He was a standout for the Hamilton Continentals in the late 80s and was a assistant coach at Northeastern for six seasons. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to reference Northeastern in the third game though. <laughs> Boston's zip code on the clock, Boston's area code rather, on the clock as we hit 617 to play here in period number two. Pomfret carries, gaining the zone is Chapman. Already with one goal, his shot is saved. Covered up there from point blank range by Brown. Tenth save of the contest for Harrison Brown. Again, the 17-year-old from St. Louis. So one of the interesting things I saw with Milton's roster going down their players is that they're all very similarly sized, all between 5'9 and 6'1", essentially. Not too tall, not too short. Well, you, know, you only have so many jerseys. You want to make sure the guys will fit in them. I'm sure that was the decision, though. Surely there wasn't a 6'7 kid at Milden. It's like they didn't just say, no, play basketball instead. Of course not. Reminded of that time that there was a period of time in which Fitchburg State had a player, Mitchell Wally, who was taller than all the players on the basketball team. <laughs> Shot from Chapman. Might have miscued it a little bit, wound up going high into the netting. We'll get another face off. 
Declan Chapman has been all over the ice, especially on the offensive end for the Griffins. He has the lone goal in the contest. Now less than five and a half minutes to play in the second period. Faceoff comes to Brown's left, won by the Mustangs. Dangerous pass there, actually intercepted by Pomfret. Shot from the point is deflected, goes back behind the net. Fought for there. Poked forward for Muirhead. Fought for Heinberg. Lost it, Amodio has it for Milton. Tries to send it forward for Lee, can't do it, but it bounces fortunately. Mason Chen will gain the zone. Chen does a spin move, takes it behind the net, looking for a pass. Passed up Marr. Steady sends it forward, advanced now. Shot save made by Boat. And chance for Pomfret. Counter attack for them. Poke checked away. Gap grabbed by Heath. Heath will clear. Sends it all the way down. And it will ping pong back and forth at center ice. Gaining the zone there is Brendan Marr. Loses the handle as it goes in the back left corner. You've got Wallenin and Pohl fighting for it there. A couple of other skaters in, a, in there in the fight. Wollenin and Pohl still. Pohl takes it back behind the net. Chasing after it is Holcomb. Holcomb sends it to Heath. Heath back to Holcomb. Now back behind the net pursued by Kalichian. Kalichian will send it back behind the net once again. Pohl gives chase this time. Big hit behind the net. Grabbed there by Lamar and Pohl. And we get a whistle with 3.56 to play here in period number two. Just great pressure there by Milton again. They're just trying to break through. You know, they came back from 2 nothing down in their last game on Wednesday against Lawrence Academy. Five in a row for the Mustangs to take the victory in that one. And for Worcester, you know, Kellen, and for Pomford against Worcester Academy, Kellen Bowden, he made 30 saves in that contest. He is the type of person who can very much weather the storm. Sent back behind the net there. Ethan Davidson giving chase for Milton. Cleared out by Pomfret. It'll go all the way down the ice. And we get a whistle with 3.41 to play here in period number two. Dan, do you know who that lovely woman who just came into the press box was? I do not. That is Joanne. I believe it's Joanne McLaughlin. It's been a while since we worked together, but we used to work together back in the very brief time when I was employed by Lunenburg Access Television. Oh. Small world, she's still there, good for her. I guess they're gonna try to do their own coverage of this game. That would be nice. Of course, we'll be here with the coverage for that as well, so you'll be able to choose your feed, I guess. We're biased, you should go with the FATV feed. We think we're better. We're right, by the way. A little bit of, put, little bit of pushing and shoving back behind the net. Also worth noting, of course, the Lunenburg folks won't be live, but you know, let's not rub salt in that one. We get a whistle back behind the net. Believe that was an icing. We'll stop the clock with 3.19 to play here in period number two. Shots in this period, 11 to three in favor of Milton. They've been buzzing a lot, but Kellen Bowden continues to weather the storm. The 19 year old from Colchester, Connecticut. It's been a fantastic performance by Bowden. Cleared out by the Griffins. Poked back in, fought for along the near side boards. Holcomb's in there for Milton. Grabbed now by Chapman, he gains the zone. Sends it forward for Spears, Spears to Chapman, and he scores! Declan Chapman, his second of the game, on a beautiful pass from Matt Spears. Pomfret goes up 2-0. And as we've said, sharp passing for one-timers, that's been the theme of the day. That's how Declan Chapman able to complete his second goal of the game, his sixth of the season, just well struck there. Getting that pass right in front of the blue paint and only so much Harrison Brown could do about it. We'll take another look at it again. Spears with a beautiful backhanded spinning pass. Chapman in the perfect position. It's like they've been doing it all their lives. Chapman puts it in the net, gives Pomfret the 2-0 lead. Now the Griffins will look for more. 
Forcilia sends it back. He was looking for Lamar. Lamar was unable to keep it. Now an on-man rush for Milton if they hurry. Centering pass poked away by Bowden. I believe the net is loose. They're going to continue play and finally blow the whistle as the puck goes out on the far side. It was a very, very dangerous situation there for Kellen Bowden, Dan. He did a great job diving forward and poking that puck away. Just a tremendous forecheck there. His official Chapman from Spears for the second goal for the Griffins. Two and a half minutes to play here in period number two. This puck comes all the way down and we'll get another face off in the Pomfret end. Dan Milton has been much more aggressive here in the second period, but it only takes one opportunity. You saw it there for Pomfret. They were able to capitalize. They only have 12 shots in this game, but if two of them find the back of the net, none of the other guys, well, you're leading to nothing, and that's what's happening here. The big red numbers on the board is what really matters there. We saw in that last play with Bowden. It's not just a matter of being proactive to shots, but reactive to the situation as well. Just being able to read it properly, do what he feels he needs to do to ensure that puck does not find its way to the back of the net. Amodio and Young going back and forth. Amodio's pass is intercepted by Nate Watson. Watson clears the red line and sends it back down. Amodio will give chase for Milton. Two minutes to play here in period number two. Milton trailing by two. Pass for Fitzmaurice. Finds no one in particular, but Fitzmaurice gives chase. Sends it forward for Heinberg. Heinberg pushes it back to Fitzmaurice. Fitzmaurice and Heinberg dancing with it now. Connor Lee interjects himself. May I step in? May I have this dance, madam? Sends it forward for Davidson. Davidson gains the blue line, looking for a pass. Nobody there. Milton was changing. Davidson will dump and wait. Pomfret trying to clear, and they do. Poked back in, but Milton has to tag up. They do still have to tag up. I don't think they know they have to tag up, and the refs blow the whistle because they didn't tag up. Henry Cohen was in an offside position. Thought he had gotten back to the line, but it was pretty clear he had not. We'll stop play with 83 seconds left to play here in the period. Hard to add much else to it uh, as we reach the uh, final minute or so of this period. Mustangs have to tag up once again, gaining the red line now. It's a loose stick on the ice just in the neutral zone there. Pomfret can't be happy with that, but they're on the offensive end as we approach 105 to play here in the second period. Aiden Durso sends it back for Wallenin. Wallenin pump fakes, shoots again. That pass, that shot is blocked. Don't think it ever got on Harrison Brown. Now a chance for Milton. Still with that loose stick on the ice. Shot is deflected, goes up into the netting. And finally, we will get that offending lumber off the playing surface. You can see as the player got the zone there, and Davidson had to maneuver around the stick to get himself an opportunity there. Dylan Hunt, as a good Marlboro boy would, picks up the stick. Please ignore the fact that I think it was actually his stick. We get a face off to the right, 49 seconds on the clock. Set forward by Chen. Back behind the net there by Kalichian. Giving chase, Pomfret player spins around, goes down, no whistle, will continue to play. Pursued there by Chen. Chen sends it forward, cleared out by Pomfret, two on two for them as they hustle up. Less than 30 to play in the period now. Back pass, shot goes blocked. That was actually deflected by Chen. Chen playing a big impact on both ends of the ice. Long stretch pass there, now an opportunity for Milton. Backward pass, center pass, shot, save made by Bowden. Best save of the night for Kellen Bowden in the dying seconds of period number two, preserving a 2-0 advantage for Pomfret, which they will take into the locker rooms as we head for the second intermission. A desperation save and a fantastic one by Kellen Bowden in the last moments of an incredible period of hockey for the 19-year-old from Colchester. So impressive, Dan, is Kellen Bowden. Definitely the star of that second period for Pomfret. 12 saves, let's see, actually give him 13 saves in that period. Just tremendous work there by the, the grizzled veteran, if you will, for this Griffin team. He's very much showing why he's one of the tri-captains with just 
how well he's been playing in this contest. An incredible period of work from him. We will take the second intermission with the teams and head to the break. It's been a fantastic day of hockey. Milton finds themselves down 2-0 to Pomfret, looking to come back here. We will have all of the action of period number three for you right here on FATV. We are back here for Hockey Day in the Berg. Pomfret School leading the Milton Academy 2-0 as we reach the end of the second intermission. Dan Pomfret really fortunate, I think, to be up 2-0 given the aggression we saw from Milton in period number two. The big difference in this game has been the Pomfret netminder there in Kellen Bowden. He has just been tremendous in goal tonight. Coming away with 20 saves. He's made a few of the spectacular variety. It's like he'll bide his time, he'll read the lanes and make the, the proactive saves. And sometimes he's reactionary. We've seen him make a couple strong moves to try to disrupt the play. You mentioned some of the fantastic saves by Kellen Bowden. We want to take another look at one that came right in the dying moments of the second period. This point blank shot off the stick of Jade, Jacob Pohl. Bowden makes the save, can't control the rebound. Fortunately for Pomfret, it trickled back behind the net. A fantastic first save by Kellen Bowden. And then again, a big break for Pomfret. Milton unable to capitalize on the loose puck in front of the net. It's been a game of missed opportunities for Milton, but also just a game of not that many opportunities. Shots on goal 20 to 12 in favor of them. Not that many opportunities for Pomfret, but again, the biggest numbers are the ones that count, and those big red numbers say 2 nothing Griffins. And for the one goal they got, I mean, both times it's been Declan Chapman, and the second time was a tremendous spinning feed from Matt Spears to find Chapman basically at the top of the blue paint at such close range. It was going to be challenging for Harrison Brown. He's made 10 saves in this contest, but you can't take too much fault in that second one, though. That was just great playmaking there by Pomfret. Obviously, longtime viewers of hockey here on FATV will realize that Milton and Pomfret aren't exactly two schools who come up here and play at the Civic Center that often. First time we've had either on FATV, I do believe. But of course, there's a very, very good reason for that. This game, as well as all of the games here at the Wallace Civic Center today to benefit Jake, T Jake Tebow and the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. We want to encourage you one more time, go to tbo 14 tbo14.fatv.org. That is the URL. We've got one more game on the slate. Don't go anywhere. It'll be Fitchburg Monty Tech taking on the Blue Knights of Lunenburg Air Shirley. Puck drop for that around 7.30 right here on FATV. But of course, we still have one more period of hockey here, Milton and Pomfret, and here with the call for period number three is Dan Bolak. 18 more minutes in regulation time for Pomfret to weather the storm, essentially, with how well Milton played in that second period. It's the Griffins now going from right to left in those road white uniforms, and Milton in the dark blue home unis going from left to right. Pomfret will try to skate it out of the zone, pass up ice for Matt Spears, a delayed offside, and Pomfret will have to tag up. And Aiden Durso will pick it up in front of his own blue line, dump it into the right wing corner as the Griffins tag up, but the Mustangs clear the zone. Caught up in the neutral zone by Spears, and now trying to get in on that is Ethan Davidson, one of the alternate captains for the Mustangs. Henry Cohen circles on the puck there, trying to protect it, but eventually taken by Chapman, who's got 100% of the goals in this contest tonight. The 18-year-old from Douglas having struck twice for the only tallies. That pass misses the mark and it will be icing. Just had to wait as soon as somebody got to the hash marks and then they can blow the whistle. 60 seconds gone in the frame. 
while we'll have a, while we have a second rather we'll thank our underwriters one more time FATV's remote productions are underwritten by Rollstone Bank and Trust Workers Credit Union Unitil Minuteman Press the Sentinel and Enter Enterprise Fitchburg State University UMass Memorial Health Health Alliance Clinton Hospital and of course North End Subaru Mustangs making their way up ice from the captain Brad Holcomb shakes off that check there Noel Webster throwing it around the boards cleared out delayed offside against Milton now they'll call it they ruled there was a touch on by a Mustang while they were still offside Brown will come outside the zone the minute 19 gone in this third 18 minute frame Draw one by the Griffins. No Vikings involved this week. Just the Griffins. Deals for Silius. Tried to move it around far side for Cam Geary. Back for Silius, but he misses the mark on that one. Not able to get his stick on the puck as it keeps floating around all the way down into Pomfret's end, where it's thrown down by Josh Milso. So on the blue line, Brendan Marr will dump in from the blue line. Getting there first is Webster for Pomfret. Around the boards to the near side. And there's a shot fought off there by Bowden. Off the stick of Matt Young. Now Geary trying to make his way up ice. Two Mustangs surrounding him. He'll just dump in. And a couple of fresh lakes will come on the ice for the visitors from Connecticut. From the blue line, that's a shot right on. Bowden will hold on to it. He thought about playing it on for a moment, but thought better of it certainly thought differently of it he looked like he was more than happy to dump it off to his teammate but then eventually just cradled it against his chest got the got the officials to blow their whistle and it'll take the face off to his right they get 21 saves blackjack for Bowden tonight this is Ian rolling in dump it in Harrison Brown the net miner from St. Louis throwing around the boards for getting the first touch on it, but Milton continuing to push it out of their own end. Settled by Powers and backhanded into the zone for the Mustangs. Or it's Philippe, Philippe Lamar. Far side now into the slot. Great shot there and a save by Bowden off the stick of Henry Cohen. Now Chris Amodio looking for a redirection in front. The redirection went the opposite direction which he desired. And tr Cohen trying to settle it again. Not much he could do. Flipped up in the air, catches a bit of the paint, and icing is waved. Saw Harrison Brown kind of stay away from that puck, try to draw the icing, but the officials decided not to give it to him. He dumped in from the red line there, no icing there either. As Holcomb is the first to arrive for the Mustangs, battling Hole, trying to dig that free. Out to the left point, and moving it along was Mason Chen. Holcomb not able to get a touch on for the Mustangs. Pompert holding. No quarter. That's intercepted. And a great opportunity. Paul just can't get it on his backhand. Bowden stayed right with him. Kellen Bowden saving his team. That was a terrible turnover in the defensive end. But Bowden was there to steer the puck away. Never actually had to face a shot. He just got his stick in there. A lesser goaltender. In net, and Milton could very much be playing with the lead. How many great saves Bowden has made. 19 years old from Connecticut, 23 stops for the netminder. So there's a kick save by Harrison Brown on the other end. Matt Spears with another great centering pass. That time Aiden Durso just hit the blocker instead of the back of the net. Sell on the red line by Fresilius. Milton can't do much with it. They'll have it back. Heath trying to make the pass on. A far side. Powers off the board. Bowden will just give it a little nudge. Ben Bundy will toss it around the boards. And now for Silius, the rush up ice, a two on one developing. He gets the shot off. And maybe Brown got a piece of it. Well, Silius had Cam Geary crashing in there with him. Geary looked like he was wide open with nothing but the back of the net. Forsilius took the shot himself, and Brown was able to steer it wide. Now back into the Pomford end. First pulled out by the Mustang, centering for a one-time feed, but nothing coming from that. 
Down to the left side. Milton trying to protect the puck. Just able to keep it in the zone was Chen. Now some nifty stick work. Holcomb can't turn one towards goal. Now dump down ice. And a whistle. Icing called against Pomfret, it so appears. Griffin's not too happy with the call. But uh, it seems like someone's about to declare a thumb war, Dan. One, two, three, four on the clock. 12.34 to play here in the third period. For the record, I would whip you in a thumb war. Almost certainly. That's never been one of the games that I have any confidence in. Shots in this period, three. Let's see. I'm pretty sure Brown made a save somewhere in there, but the shots say 3 nothing in favor of Milton thus far. Brown's had to do stuff. Bumper has got to figure out how to count to five right now in terms of skaters. They have one too many on the ice. Well, they got to five. The problem is they didn't stop. All that time, you know, just gives those legs a little extra time to rest. Are you suggesting there may be gamesmanship afoot? Perhaps just a little bit. And now they will get to change up for fresh legs, and Milton won't. As the Mustangs guilty of icing themselves. It's been good aggression from Milton, but nothing showing for it on the scoreboard yet. Just been superior goaltending at the other end. Shots nearly a two to one ratio in favor of the Mustangs. Bomford's got the strong netminder. There's a shot and a kick save, a very juicy rebound there off the shot of Cohen. But only players in white to get to it. Nothing more that Milton could do with that chance. But they'll try again. The left wing corner and around to the right. Turnaround shot by Davidson stopped at another bad angle chance. That's turned aside there by Bowden as well. Davidson in the right wing corner. Go right point. Dylan Hunt trying to feed it two powers. Bonford able to take control of the puck, clear it out of the zone. Hunt will regain, drop it off. Madden Powers has it taken. A little bit of a nudge there and a trade-off of aggressions as the two players will part ways. On the far side, a drop pass. Eventually be picked up by Jacob Pohl. Tries to put it in front, but nobody there to try to turn that towards goal. Well, very much can do so as a Modio. Left point looking for a redirect. Mika Kalichian not able to do too much with it but still battling with the puck. He gets the bad angle shot. Bowden makes the save. Puck is still loose. They're still jamming away at it. Another chance. They score! The puck never did get covered up. And in the end, it's Jacob Pohl who shoots it through the maze of bodies to put the Mustangs on the board. Well, Dan, if one Mustang can't beat Kellen Bowden, how about four Mustangs? At four different players from Milton poking at that puck. It stayed loose in front of the net. Finally, Jacob Pohl got enough behind it. We'll take another look right here. See Pohl there with the forehand wrist shot. Nothing Bowden could do about it. He's been so good all night. Can't really blame him for not making that save, but Milton is back in this one. It is now a one goal game. Bowden just searching for it. He thought he had it covered. Never got the whistle. Puck remained available. And it was just a matter of striking while the iron was hot. And Milton finally has themselves on the board. The 27th shot of the game for the Mustangs is the first to beat Kellen Bowden. Now another shot from Cole is turned aside by Bowden. Make it 27 saves for him now. And now another chance. That one goes behind the net a little offline. Mustangs picking it up on the near side. Kalichian trying to throw it to the right side, that far side half boards, but nobody there, but still 
Milton staying strong in the puck and Paul able to take control of it again. Out to the right side, Fawnen trying to put it on goal. Goes off bodies in front, another chance. Found its way through the paint, but not much more than that. Shot through traffic, goes off a body. As Fawnen wanted to play it off the hop off the boards. But just too many bodies in the way to comfortably take that shot. Mustangs had to change personnel. Brad Holcomb went to the bench after taking a very hard hit there. And now, Niels Vercelius with the shot going well wide. So they actually announced the goal to Amodio, but we know from having watched the replay, it was definitely pole. Yeah, we've got video that says it was number seven there, but okay. And they didn't give any assists for it. But sometimes, you know, in the mosh pit of players, you know, the referees lose sight of who actually got it themselves. Oh, yeah. They're the ones who report the goal at the end of the day. And the, the officials and the, uh, the teams and whatever will determine later when they submit the final box score who's actually right on that one. But now another chance, that one deflected up into the netting and out of play. Five seconds short of halfway in this third period. Milton has all 10 shots in this period. And they've cut the deficit to one. Pomfret has not really shown any aggression on the offensive end, Dan. They've been more than happy to just kind of sit back on defense, kind of lean on their goaltender, Kellen Bowden. I wonder if maybe now that it's just a one goal game, we're going to see a little bit more aggressive play from them as they try to maybe expand this lead or prevent Milton from tying it up. Interesting how Matthew Gothel's seventh year head coach for the Griffins has his side play things out in the last nine minutes. And here's a two on one developing for Pomfret. And nearly with the hat trick chance, Declan Chapman. He had a lot of net to shoot at and didn't get any of it. You know, Dan, a very wise man once speculated that we might see a little bit more aggression from the Griffins now that it was just a one goal game. I don't remember who that was, but that man should probably get a medal or something. He seems very smart. We'll give you a 10% raise for the day. Works for me. Jarrah will come to the right of Harrison Brown. Does that mean I get more of those steak tips? Because those were very good. I imagine so. Oh, good. Here's a two-on-one developing. This is Pohl. Tries to get it across, and it's scored! It wasn't the first pass that was able to get it past Bowden, but it was the second and third change of direction. Pohl with the finish to tie it. This one came from Brad Holcomb, and after Holcomb dumped it off for Paul, he came crashing in. I believe he actually made contact with Kellen Bowden. You saw Bowden climbing out of the pile of bodies in his own net. We'll see it again here. Paul goes for Holcomb. Holcomb barrels into the goaltender. There's nothing Bowden can do about that. You see him gesticulating like, come on, I got a guy on top of me here. You're just gonna let that go but uh, just let that go, they will. Just as it was two goals for Declan Chapman for Pomfret, for Milton, it's two goals for Jacob Pohl to make this a 2-2 two -two game. An incredible turnaround in this third period. There's the first shot on goal in the period for Pomfret, coming off the stick of Niels Fresilius on the wraparound. Saw Fresilius very frustrated that he didn't get that wraparound. Saw him cocking up on, you know, choking up rather, on that bat. Looked like he was cocked and ready to swing for the fences in frustration. We'll take another look at the goal here. There's the pass and then going right into Bowden. Maybe the contact was made after the puck was already in the net. I'm that also seeing too, Holcomb losing his footing before you know, he gets the pass off, he's losing his footing already. Couldn't tell if it was contact made by a Griffin to knock him down, but he didn't go in there by choice. It certainly wasn't intentional on Holcomb's part. Bowden was still very much not pleased with it. I imagine any Griffin fans watching on FATV.org will, will be similarly displeased. But we have a tied game with seven and a half to play. That one, oh boy. The way that Hol the way that Bowden reacted there on the shot from Amodio, he seemed crossed up for a moment. 
Noah Webster was in there. He got a deflection off. We very found out, we very nearly rather, found out what the definition of a rebound goal is. Bowden has had tremendous numbers this year, as we've mentioned before. 208 goals against 934 save percentage. Two shutouts and a six and three record. He's been tremendous in the cage for the Griffins. And he's needed to be tremendous again tonight. Stopping that shot right off the draw. He's got 31 saves. That was Mika Kalichian who took the shot. The 17-year-old from Il Blizzard, Quebec. Draw controlled by the Griffins. Rainbowed out of the zone. And quickly on the rush there. Tremendous release by Chapman. Just offline. Chapman definitely looks like one of those many players who look like they can play at the next level. Especially with a release like that. Aiden Durso up the far side. Skated around to the left wing corner and farther beyond to the point. We'll now pass it off and Powers. Looking round. Conference still controlling. Only one shot on goal in this period. Another chance goes well wide. Another shot off the mark. It's not to say they've only attempted one shot. They've attempted many shots, just only one has gotten to Harrison Brown. Brown has not been tested that much in this third period. He's only had to face five shots since the start of the second period. But Milton, you know, they came back from two goals down just a few days ago against Lawrence Academy. They've done it again here in Fitchburg. 6.27 to go, third period, Milton two, Pomfret two. You mentioned that game against Lawrence Academy, ultimately a 5-2 win for the Mustangs. Again, both of these teams coming in on the victorious side in their last game. Pomfret actually riding a two-game winning streak, beating Millbrook and Worcester Academy by a combined score of 9-2. Pomfret's last loss on January the 12th against the Winston School. It's one of those teams that qualifies as close, if you will. Of course, there's Groton and Lawrence, who are both in Groton. That's relatively close as well, but Pittsburgh sort of splits the middle. Shot from the right point by Ethan Davidson is stopped by Kellen Bowden. Bowden taking a second to check on his equipment. He has faced a lot of pressure in these past two periods. Wonder if it's starting to wear down on him. It's already 15 shots on goal for Milton in this period. They had seven in the first, 13 in the second. Milton has taken control of this game as it's gone on. Bofford obviously taking advantage of great opportunities, being fortuitous when it mattered. Getting that second goal, giving them a little bit of insurance back in the second, but nonetheless, since then though, it's been pretty much all Milton. Loose puck turned over. Kalichian with the backhand pass, trying to feed Holcomb. But he finds the stick of Nate Watson instead. Brown will settle behind his own cage. Five and a quarter minutes to go in regulation time in a 2-2 hockey game. A couple of Mustangs nearly ran into each other there in front of goal. Holcomb with a 75-footer. And that'll be gobbled up by Bowden. No further play. Milton is very nearly tripling up Pomfret in terms of shots on goal. Currently 36-13 in favor of the Mustangs. Kellen Bolton has been asked to make a number of saves. I think he's made every one you could have asked him to and then a couple more. There are currently six Mustangs on the ice and they dropped the puck before they could count. But they do stop play rather than assess a penalty. See one of the play. I can see Chris Simodio coming on, tap Dylan Hunt on the back, saying, You got to come off. And then the, the linesman not paying attention to that development. The referees did catch it though and stopped play before anything bad could happen out of it. As Chapman skated around the boards, but ultimately lost it and dumped back in. Or Pomfort will just clear it down the ice. That won't go for icing. They'll rule that was attainable there for Chen. Mara with a touch pass. 
Taken by Pomfret at their own blue line. Floated high in the air, trying to find Chapman again. There's Powers in the left wing corner for the Griffins. Powers looking, sends it across, and he puts it in the fifth row. It's a nice catch by the guy in the fifth row there, in the baseball cap, and the mask around his neck. I would be meaner to him for that, but I'm not presently wearing mag because I need to be able to see. Anyway, good catch. And he throws it back, besides, he doesn't really feel like he needs the souvenir. Well, yeah. Vulcanized rubber is very hard to come by these days. You know, supply chain issues, you've heard. 4.20 to go in regulation time in a 2-2 hockey game. It's on the left point. The shot from Ian Wollin and missing wide to the right, picked up by the Griffins as they try to make their way to the near side. Center to the right point, and a shot behind the net it goes from Tate Fitzmaurice. Bill able to push it out of the zone. Comes to Matt Young. Young with a shot. It's snared out of the air. Here the whack as it hits the glove. Just, a, boat. just an aggressive, almost angry snatching of the puck out of midair by Bowden. As if to say, do you really think that is going to get past me? Yes, you've beaten me twice, but for one of those, I had a man on top of me. Do you think that is going to get past me? No. No, sir, it shall not. Draw will come to the Connecticut Natives right with 35 saves in the contest. And off the draw for a bit of traffic, a kick save for Bowden, make it 36 saves. He's been tested a lot tonight, but he's keeping his Griffin side in it. Bill wants to write a happy ending for themselves with three and a half to go in a 2-2 hockey game. Here on Hockey Day in the Berg, another shot, a save by Bowden. Rebound pops up to the top of the left circle, where it's settled down by Bonin. Bodied into the boards. Davidson skating around, trying to create some room for himself. The Griffin's just sticking right to him like glue. Kurt Heath. She get back behind the net. Powers, dispossessed. Pomfort trying to move it out. They'll get it to the neutral zone. Push back towards the blue line. Webster with a nudge on. And Watson, can of corn for Brown. He'll glove it down and play it on. Holcomb with the pass goes off the skate of Gleachian. Now two on two back the other way. Chapman's got both the goals for Pomfret. Looking to wrap it around a little bit, but goes to the left point instead. Shot blocked. Cole got in the way, he's got both the goals for Milton. Whiffed on shot, second chance is stopped by Brown. Worth mentioning as we go beneath two and a half minutes to play in this one. If we are tied at the end of regulation, there will be a five minute, five on five overtime period. After which point, if we still don't have a winner, we'll go home. Well, they'll go home, we won't go home. We have another hockey game, but you know what I mean. Draw controlled by Milton. And they'll try to make their way up ice from Henry Cohen. Pass up left side. He finds Watson instead. It's on the wrong side. It's Powers, actually. Powers into the zone. Puts it towards goal. And I'm saying the wrong names again. It was Spears. Matt Spears. Shot through traffic. Save rebound. Put over the net. Another great chance for Pomfret. They've had a few good scoring opportunities in this contest. So many times it feels like they've attempted shots that have gone offline. Feels like Milton's just a little better at putting it on target. I mean, 39-16 are the shots on goal, but if we were counting total shot attempts, it would probably be a little less disparity, I think. It would be closer than that, definitely. You can see the uniforms. Fitchburg, Bonnie Tech, Ludenberg, Air Shirley. <laughs> With tremendous sight lines as they wait for their turn on the ice. They have game number three of Hockey Day in the Berg. And the penalty drawn as Brad Holcomb tried to split the two defenders. And they could only stop him by breaking the rules. Hooking is the call. One Mustang charging through two Griffins. I think they're going to get Noah Webster for the infraction. Actually, no, it is not. Excuse me, it's Josh Milso heading to the box. 
So 116 to play in regulation, and we may well play all of that with Milton on the man advantage. That man right there, Kellen Bowden, has had a tremendous day. 37 saves unofficially as we get a timeout called here. But Bowden will need to stand up probably against a little bit more pressure if he is to take his team into overtime or if Pomfret can somehow find a shorthanded goal and a winner. It's been a tremendous battle here in this third period. Milton with two goals, both coming off the stick of Jacob Pohl. They've got 19 shots on Kellen Bowden in this third period. On for credit with just four on Harrison Brown. We'll take a look again at the last scoring chance right here. Just a real quick shot and then the rebound came right to Aiden Durso. Durso had a wide open net, but he just couldn't hit the shot right. Got it a little bit too high up on the handle of the stick and it floated harmlessly above the net. Aiden Durso will be kicking himself for that. Buck was on edge and it was just really challenging to put it towards goal. Hoffert's already finished their discussions. Milton just taking a little extra time. Nobody sounded the buzzer, so they're not going to stop. Yeah, the, the two referees in one line has been also having a conversation with Jim LaPointe about something. They seem to have straightened it out. Now the skate over here to the Pomfret side. A prime opportunity. Bill looking for the winner with 76 seconds to go in regulation time. And on the draw, Pomfret able to nudge it out of the zone for Max Spears. Hooking was the call against Milso, who sits in the sin bin for the second time today. So we take under 60 seconds to go as Milton regains the zone. Around the board, still come to the near side. Referee trying to get out of the way. So he's got to keep pace with the players. Doesn't want to lead to an obstruction. And now at the point, settled down. Davidson with that shot, that great save by Bowden. Bowden going to the full butterfly, into the splits to make the save. Just grabbing that one with the glove on the left hand. A tremendous save in what has been a tremendous game for Kellen Bowden. As I've mentioned, many of these players will be playing at the next level of in college hockey. I'm really interested to see where Kellen Bowden will be playing. Just a tremendous contest from the 19-year-old netminder. 38 saves in this contest. 30 seconds to go in regulation. Hoffer trying to clear the zone. Keith keeps it in. And Fresilius able to knock that pass away and knock it out of the zone. Force Bill to tag up and they'll reset. As Kalichian out to the right point. Pole along for Heath. Fresilius knocking off his stick. Seven seconds to go. Davidson trying to protect the puck in the left wing corner. Two seconds. Trying to get one more shot off. The flex wide. And that brings us to the end of the third period. Milton just poured on the pressure. They were able to equalize and they wanted more. But Kellen Boten, you see there being embraced by his teammates. They know the job he has done. The job is not yet over. 38 saves for him, but they're going to need up to five more minutes of impeccable net minding from Kellen Bowden. If they are to get out of here with a tie or a win, are the Griffins of Pomfret. Again, we will have a five minute overtime period. They're not going to clean the ice or anything. They're just running the clock, giving the players a chance to catch their breaths, meet with their coaches. Five minutes, five on five. Next goal wins, and we say five on five, but after all, there's still 44 seconds of penalty time. So Milton will start with three quarters of a minute on the power play. 
In the first 36 minutes of this game, Milton had 20 shots. In the third period alone, Milton had 20 shots. What momentum the Mustangs have seized. We were wondering if they were going to get a goal in this contest, but this third period has been tremendous for the Mustangs. Once again, they battled back from two goals down. They did that on Wednesday against Lawrence Academy. It came away winners. They're trying to do it again today. They've come back from two goals down, but now they need overtime to determine how this game's going to end. One more chance for us to mention Hockey Day in the Berg. All the proceeds from today go to benefit the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. Today is all about Tebow Tough. Again, TBO14, TBO14.fatv.org. It'll take you to the GoFundMe page for Jake Tebow. You can also scan the QR code at the bottom left corner of your screen. and It'll take you right there. Five minutes, five aside, although five on four, we will begin. Thanks to 44 seconds of carryover penalty time against Josh Milsa. Thanks for Pomford, you know, the experience of both 19 years old, the other two netminers, Zach blocks them, and Connor Lee both 17. But that experience has paid dividends for this Griffin side tonight. 38 saves for the 19-year-old netminder from Colchester, Connecticut. And ice, well, we're off, excuse me a moment. I need to get my wits about me here for what that whistle was. Looks like it was offside. Yep. Setting up for a face-off just outside the Milton end. Thought for a moment they might have called icing, but they couldn't have done that because Bomford's on the kill. The teams have changed ends once again for the overtime, so as with the second period, Pomfret will go left to right. And actually, I think the officials weren't quite sure of the call. We're going to get a penalty, or face-off rather, all the way down in the Pomfret end. They're saying it was an intentional offsides? That's the only uh, logical explanation I've got. I'll, okay. I wasn't, I should have been paying more attention personally. But draw comes to the left of Bowden. That's Ethan Davidson, right wing corner. Pass back to Davidson on the half boards. Now Chen to the left circle. And the pass off, broke it up. Nearly cleared out of the zone, but kept in nicely there by Mason Chen. Bad angle shot, and that stopped by Bowden. That time it was, it was Kalichian taking the shot. Jacob Pohl, who has both of the goals for Milton, is actually diving in front of it. Don't know if he maybe got a deflection on it, but Bowden made the save nonetheless. Just 11 seconds left on the man advantage for the Mustangs. Draw will come to Bowden's right. Now Milton having trouble counting. They've got their five skaters on. They'll take the draw. That one sticked away, nearly back in off of him, off the boards. It's never a good sign for a goaltender when you're showing your numbers to the ice. Kellen Bowden was rolling over like he was on fire, just stop, drop, and roll to make that save. But make the save he did. Six seconds to go on the penalty. It's Josh Milso. Now, Mr. McGurk down on the ice is very insistent that uh, they change that personnel there that Mika Kalichian comes off. With Henry Cohen coming back on for a moment. Off the draw, Milton takes it. Goes point to point. Shot from traffic. Stopped! just as the penalty expires. It's now 40 saves for Kellen Bowden. Tested so much tonight. We are back to even strength. As you said, Dan, 42-16 are the shots in this one. Just doing quick math on average, Bowden faces about 30 shots a game. So definitely a heavier workload tonight. But he has stood tall for this Griffin side. The score remains 2-2, a minute gone in overtime. 
Dumped around the boards. Milso will go and retrieve. Pass it out. Looks for Watson. Goes off his skates. From the penalty boxes. It'll be Heath. Stretch pass right side. Here's a possible chance. And a tremendous wrister goes high. Off the stick of pole. And now Chapman upended. No call coming. Dispossessed legally, they'll say. But he still battles for it to keep control. Now out in front. The shot is blocked, deflected up into the netting and out of play. Harrison Brown should send Brad Holcomb a bouquet of flowers or something as gratitude for blocking that shot. Looked like a point blank opportunity for the Griffins. But fortunately for the Mustangs, Holcomb was able to get his stick in there, deflect that puck up over the boards into the netting and stop play. Under 200 seconds to go in this game. Next goal wins it. Chapman with a shot and a shoulder save by Brown. He's got all the way through to him. What it looked like to me. Philippe Lamar. Back from his own blue line. Knocked down there at the red line and picked up by Spears. Spears into the zone. Cam Geary trying to battle there for Pomfret. His powers for the Mustangs. Trying to push it out of the zone. Knocked down. Durso getting in the way of that. Couldn't be kept in by Webster, and out of the zone it goes. Now Webster's got to get on his horse. So he's got a Mustang in pursuit. Davidson takes that clearing attempt. Now on to the right side. Can't get the shot settled there from Cohen. Now down to 2.20 to go in, in this contest. Not in regulation, but in overtime now. And Webster gains the zone. Tries to feed it out. But he finds the stick of Cole instead, who puts it over the glass and out of play. I wish, Dan, that I could live my life with the level of just overall chill of the woman in the fifth row with the, with the gray little palm hat who just watched that puck go right past her face, didn't even spill her hot cocoa. She was just cool as a cucumber. It's not coming to me. I know where it's going. I can read that trajectory. I'm not panicked. Remember one time as a spectator, I've seen a puck buzz so close to me and I didn't react, but only because I was trying to get my lab stats to work on the phone at that moment. <laughs> it would have been tremendously awful if that puck had hit me in the face. It would have been. It's one of those weird things when everyone else is reacting around you, but you're not. There is the Fitchburg Monty Tech side who will be taking the ice shortly. Got to wait for this game to end, though. That game, a 7.30 scheduled puck drop. Obviously, we are just a little bit past that. It's what happens when hockey runs long. But hey, it's a good cause, it's a good day, and we've had two very good hockey games. Surely a third still to come. Here's Brad Holcomb. Gains the zone, dumps in for Mika Kalichian. Around the boards, right wing corner. Jacob Pohl has both the goals for Milton today. Keeping control of it. On the right side, Pohl pops off his stick. Blasted in the direction of goal by Mason Chen, but behind the net it goes. Dylan Hunt trying to dig it out, far side corner. Kalichian. Somebody's glove is loose in the back left corner there. Kalichian still holds. Shot flutters through traffic, but off line. Judging by the barehanded players on the ice, I think it's Dylan Hunt's left glove. He's lost some equipment today. That puck changed direction in a very strange way, but ultimately goes behind the net. Offered in a sense trying to weather the storm. And here's Declan Chapman, who has both the goals for Pomfret gaining the zone, but will leave off and leave the ice as Fresh Lakes will come on for the Griffins. 30 seconds to go. Holding on there. There's a great chance, and there's your winner! Matt Spears, all alone at the top of the paint. The Griffins win it in overtime.
the strong goaltending of Kellen Bowden is rewarded as Pomfret is able to find the winner with 26.1 seconds left. Just a break it on goal, pulling Brown out of position and waiting at the top of the paint was Matt Spears. He made that tremendous pass there to set up the second goal in this contest. And he's able to get the winner on that. A fantastic goal indeed. Spears had a wide open net in front of him. You see the Pomfret players embracing their goaltender, Kellen Bowden. He put on a Herculean effort. Just incredible work in goal for him. Obviously, the home side, the Milton fans, not thrilled with the way this ended. But this was a tremendous game. Both teams played so very well. Just a fabulous game, Dan. Incredible to watch. Congratulations to Pomfret. They really deserved this victory solely based on the play of Kellen Bowden. They, the whole team played well. But we'll take another look at the winning goal. Set up beautifully there by Declan Chapman. Chapman had the first two goals. He sets up the third. It's actually Noah Webster who ends up getting the lone assist there. And Webster, you know, he skates in there. You see the one defender selling out to try to break up the pass. But Brown, in a sense, overcommits. He's going to trust 100% that his defender is going to block that pass. The defender was not able to block that pass. And with him committed as far as he was, Spears just had an open net to shoot at, and he wasn't going to miss from that spot. We'll take another look at it again here. Again, the game-winning goal in overtime by Matt Spears. Set up right there so well by Webster, oh, right and, across the face of goal. Yeah, just look at that. You know, two defenders going down like that. It's like Brown trusted that it would not find its way past them, but we saw it sneak right under the ankle there of Mason Chen. A great goal for Spears. Fantastic work by our FATV crew. We want to thank all of them for their contributions today. Our director, Nate Glennie, Jared Roberts running replay, Travis Falk handling graphics and audio and just everything, and our camera operators, Robin Como, Todd Govan, and Caitlin Mobilia. Thank you to all of them as well. Dan, this has just been this game in particular was a tremendous game for a tremendous cause. We want to say one more time, tbo14.fatv.org. Dan, why don't we thank our underwriters as well before we say goodbye. Indeed. Laurel Stone Bank, Workers Credit Union, Unitil, Minuteman Press, North End Subaru, Sentinel and Enterprise, Fitchburg State University, and UMass Memorial Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital. You see them there on the screen. Thank you so much to them. Mr. Bolak, your final thoughts before we say goodbye. Through one period of play, it was a pretty closely contested game. As the game went on, Milton you know, got more and more and more and more shots and opportunities. Pomper trying to stay with them as best they could, but it came down to the heroic goaltending there of Kellen Bowden. As I said, a lesser netminder, and this would have been a very lopsided game. But Bowden, with 40 saves in this contest, keeps his side in it up until the very end. In the final minute, it's Pomfret who pens themselves a winner. A fantastic game, a well-earned victory for the Pomfret School. 3-2 is the final. For folks watching live on FATV, don't go anywhere. We've got one more game. But for the folks who were only interested in this one, we thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time right here on FATV.